Hello everyone, it's Soji Q and we're back with a new Korean patch notes for January 18th, 2018. So start off with characters. We got some minor ones here. When hitting an enemy with a matchlock, the graphics will be different based on the material of the target. So that sounds kind of cool, like actual better sound effects. And um, here's an interesting one. You can now right or left click while your character is knocked down to get up quicker. That's pretty interesting. Haven't tested that out myself just yet. And uh, here's one that will definitely make uh, Strikers, Mystics, and Lons happy. Fix an issue where the falling characters would cheer when obtaining a rare item while using their Black Spirit Raid skills. Reds right? for Strikers, Mystics, and Lons. Yeah. That's, uh, that could be pretty annoying when you're just grinding or doing some PvP out in the open world and you happen to like kill some mobs and you get like freaking doing your 100% and your mob picks up something rare and you start cheering and oh my god headache and uh, that's about it for there and I mean when the character is invisible when you have that option on uh, you won't see their buff animations anymore so that was kind of weird seeing those sometimes so that's fixed as well and over here we got warrior so pressing directional keys consecutively in awakening stance will activate head chase and fix the graphical glitch with Parando armor. And rangers here, they just fix some some uh, text errors. Sorks, the amulet will be visible in non-combat stance and awakening stance. And tamers, pressing A, S, and D consecutively in awakening stance will activate leaves dropping, and then flow gust. And pressing W consecutively in awakening stance will activate legendary beast power. You cannot use leaves dropping and flow gust when your weight is over 126%. And they fix the animation error when pressing shift plus T plus W. And we'll go on to Valkyrie. Pressing A and D consecutively in awakening stance will activate shield chase. Musa's pressing W and S consecutively in the waking stance will activate chase. And Maywa, same thing. Oh, a little bit different. Oh, it's probably the same thing. Pressing A, D, and S consecutively in the waking stance will activate sleep steps. Pressing W consecutively in the waking stance will activate forward chase. And wizard. So we fixed an issue where the wizard's body would change to the old man's body after equipping the snowman's hat. Oh, holy crap! That's actually—I don't know. That was actually probably pretty cool in a way. Shoot! All of a sudden, you could like be going from like a, you know, a young dashing man, and then equipping the Santa hat, you turn into old fart. Well, anyone that was you know wanted to wear that Santa hat, you don't have to worry about turning into an old man anymore. Of course. KR. I don't know if we have that problem in NA and EU. And witches, they fix a graphical glitch with the Hairstyle 7. So anyone that use that Hairstyle 7, uh, that fix is coming for you guys. And strikers, pressing A, D plus right mouse button after crouching woof will activate flow mass destruction first. And Lon, here we go. We got quite a bit of changes for them. Pressing W plus right mouse button after the first hit of Chain Wheel will activate steep steps of Apocalypse. And pressing Shift plus left mouse button while using Earthen Scars will activate Rage. And pressing S plus right button after Return to Not while sprinting with the Elegance buff will activate Screams of Confinement first. And Death will recover 30 WP. I'm assuming that's a skill. Not actually, you dying will cover you 30 WP because that would be quite useless. <laughs> and uh, Steps of Apocalypse will be used before Chain Wheel when you're pressing W plus right mouse button while using Return to Not or Piercing Heart. They also fixed an exclusive graphic when using an attack, Crescent Penumdrum. Uh, graphics of death and soul grass have changed and when you check the uh, remove other players graphics option the graphics of crescent palm drum skills will be optimized and they fix some other graphical glitches with certain costumes and here we go we got some items now the pansy the general goods vendor in grana will sell lanterns now 
and the selling prices for the falling items will be 70k so all those times you're getting all those pieces of something in valencia like basilisk rings and pieces of that casualty pieces you'll be able to sell those now for 70k instead of you know trashing them for nothing you get something for them now and the uh, phrase uh, additional damage to monsters has been changed to additional ap to monsters and they fix some stuff with the uh, Azula accessories, descriptions, and fix some kind of enchanting issue as well. And here is a big one, you know, um, artisans. The big change on artisans, but nah, I don't know, I mean, not too big in my opinion. Artisan memories will recover four times more durability instead of three times max durability. So I mean, that's kind of converse, a controversial kind of thing, but in my opinion. Eh, not too big of a deal. I mean, once you're, you know, doing yellow accessories, you're going to gain one more point out of it instead of, you know, basically you're gaining one, one more durability for pop and, you know, other things below that, blue items and stuff like that. Um, I mean, it helps a lot more there, but, you know, um, for yellow accessories, not too big of a change. So in my opinion, not too, I mean, of course, artisans are one of the most pay-to-win items, but um, this change here doesn't really bother me personally. Um, you guys could go ahead and tell me you guys your guys' opinion about the change. You think maybe it's a step in, you know, like, you think that's, like, a step too far with artisans, making them more OP, or you think it's like, eh, you kind of just brush it off. That's That's kind of how I feel. I don't think it's too big of a problem. And um, here's another one that's pretty interesting. When you enhance an item to pen, your family name will be imprinted onto that item. And of course, this does not apply to pen items that have already become pen. And the family name won't show on the marketplace, but will appear when you buy the item. So that's kind of cool. So people that, you know, make those pen items, you know, they'll be able to be remembered forever for making that pen item. So I think that's kind of cool. And we'll move on to content. And here's another one for life skillers. They fixed an issue where you cannot fish in some of the ponds in Narvi Steppe and Valencia City. So, you know, they, of course, there's those little ponds that you've been trying to fish at. Well, you can do that now. And here's some big ones for Node Wars, Conquest War changes. Elephant Nursery will produce elephants in 10 minutes. Large Siege Towers will produce Siege Towers in 20 minutes. And the Trina Demolition Axe will deal 20% more damage, dude. And those things are already so strong when you group up as a group now. 20% more damage to those suckers. And elephants got a huge buff. Elephants will deal 50% more damage to command posts, forts, gates, and annexes. Elephants are going to be pretty scary now. 50% more damage. That's quite a bit of an increase there. And also cannons got a buff. Cannons will deal 20% more damage to command posts, forts, and gates. And when auto-pathing with mounts, automatically use the mount stamina recovery food option. Will be checked by default. And here's some uh, interesting marketplace uh, changes. The chance where an item is pre-ordered has been increased by 12.5%. So you'll definitely see a little bit more pre-orders actually going through now. Marketplace registration queue time will be 15 minutes. So sometimes excuse me oh my god sometimes you know, you know you see some items go up like 10 minutes and stuff like that uh, and now it will be 15 minutes so you got gotta wait at least 15 minutes there and now you can buy an item that has been placed a bid on even when a cheaper one is registered after your bid so that's that's a nice change because sometimes that got kind of annoying Actually, it was. It was annoying. <laughs> and here we go on to monsters. When your character is hit by the falling monster, blood physics will match the direction of the attack. So you got uh, certain uh, certain bosses there. They mostly look like... Uh, they're not all world bosses ones, but... Eh. And they fix some uh, additional little uh, animation glitches here and there. And we'll move on to quest and knowledge. 
Um, nothing too bad here. I mean, there's a one where uh, the chance of getting platinum for the harder with platinum quest has increased greatly. Um, they also changed uh, if you do not have knowledge on Monarch of the Darkness Bell Arm after completing uh, the two Aferia quests, you can talk to Faharu in Aferia Port and gain the knowledge. So if you're looking for that kind of knowledge, I guess you could go to Port Aferia. And they fixed an issue where certain characters could not accept the Black Spirit's gift too. And typos and senses errors are fixed as well. Here we go, game world NPCs and graphics. So you got some awkward lines of certain NPCs are fixed. Uh, you got some city guards who are walking between the soldiers in the front of the NPCs. Valks have been removed. When granite guards are attacking negative karma characters, they'll go around the objects to attack the players that are behind objects. And so you can now talk to the NPC Lonely Gavella in Valencia Desert, fixed in a normal location of the villager near Grana 15. When an enhancement fails, the notification message will have a red graphic. And nothing nothing too too interesting there. And UI changes. Um most of it's nothing too special here either. Um they did uh they did add one new UI, I think that's pretty big though. Uh but right here, the list here, I'll let you guys look at it. Uh, nothing too interesting here, but we'll move on. So they finally added the 3D map into the KR version. And they got different notifications here for World Bosses, New Verkutum, and Karanda. They'll be posted in different colors. So now you just don't have to, you know, if you, you know, just hear the sound, you don't have sound down, you just like caught a glimpse of like the boss message co color boss message pop up on the screen and you kind of like just get a glimpse you're like wait what was that but now you'll be able to you know color coordinate so if you catch just the glimpse of it you'll go oh, okay it's like purple karanda or kudum it's purple you know something like that because i always have that problem i'm too lazy to go check on the discord you know i just like saw the glance like oh what was that so now i'll be able to tell if i just caught a glance and uh the for certain people you can change the key bindings for the walk slash run key I know they they didn't have that for a while, so they finally put that into the game again. So you can see here, you can see an example of the, you know, the 2D map and the 3D map. Um, the 3D map, you know, I, I, I like it, and then I don't like it. Um, I was noticing that it, I seem to not be able to see players, like the white dots of players on the mini-map. Maybe I'm just blind, uh, but... That was the only aspect that I was having trouble with, but it seems like clicking around places is also kind of nicer. Um, but it's it's a little bit different. I think we I definitely personally have to get used to it. Uh, maybe the more time I mess around with it, the more I'll be able to enjoy it and see the you know the actual use of it. Uh, but for now, you know, I'm still happy with the 2D map. I think it gets the job done. But you know, with the the 3D map. You know, it's it's kind of nice you get to see you know, all the, the 3D structures and stuff. I'm not going to lie, that's kind of cool. Let's go into it. So you click on the 3, 3D icon at the top left of the corner of the minimap to switch. So you just have a little button you can switch back and forth to whichever one you want. So it's cool that you can have the option if you still just like the 2D map. You could definitely just keep using that. And just with the flick of the button, you can switch between the two. Let's see, the minimap mode will remain the same after you disconnect and re-enter the game. So you don't have to keep swapping between the two every time you log out. Uh, the 3D minimap will throw three-dimensional display of the area nearby. You can check the area near you in 360 degrees. The desert and ocean will have three-dimensional graphics elevations. However, buildings are not displayed on the minimap. The 3D map doesn't show the location of party members and direction of quest objectives. Marking quest objectives in areas in certain portions of the minimap highlighted by pet skills will be added later. So they will have that stuff, just not at this point in time. You can turn off the settings, game others, rotatable minimap option to use the 3D minimap better. And the guide video for the world map will open in a separate web window. And they fixed an issue uh, 
uh, will form the action better, the key bindings and stuff like that. And they added a new wor watermark for Turkey. So that is it for the patch notes. Nothing too big this week, um, but you know they're changing up the UI slowly, like they said they would. Um, it's a bit interesting, you know. Uh, I think it's I think it's a good thing um, that they're still allowing the players to have the options between the old and the new UI, not forcing just the new UI. Um, I know some games have done that in the future. I mean, not in the future, but in the in the past with other games I've played. Um, and I was like, damn, I don't really like this new UI. I wish I could use the, the old one. And uh, Black Desert is allowing you still to use the new and the old, which I think is awesome. Hope they keep it up and keep making you know this game better and making this game awesome. Without further ado, thanks for watching, everyone. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button if you enjoyed the video. And I'll catch you guys later. Take care, everyone. Have a nice day.